This week, it is four years since the murder of Anna Politkovskaya, the journalist who had been writing continuously about human rights abuses in Chechnya since 1999 for the Russian newspaper Novaya Gazeta. On Saturday, the 7th of October 2006, she was shot when entering the elevator of the apartment building in Moscow, where she lived. We spoke with Amnesty International Friedrich Ebert in Moscow, who worked with Anna Politkovskaya, to tell us more about this case. How do you feel now about what happened to Anna Politkovskaya after all these years? Um, it's very sad that uh, four years after her murder, which has caused so much international uh, response to it, that after four years we still don't know who stand, stood behind her killing and uh, those who committed the crime are still have, have still haven't been brought to justice. Uh, what is the situation with the present investigation into Anna Politkovskaya's murder? Today the investigation committee under the, the Office of the Prosecutor General of the Russian Federation announced that uh, they have extended the period of investigation until February 2011 and uh, that the, um, the suspected murderer um, has, been, um, on, has been put out for on an international arrest warrant. Um, has Anna Politkovskaya's murder in any way changed the situation for human rights defenders in your opinion? Since then, other human rights defenders and lawyers have, have been murdered, including good friends and colleagues of Anna Politkovskaya, such as Stanislav Makhelov and Natalia Zemirova. And of course, it had a very bad, very negative effect on, um, on those people here in the Russian Federation who want to stand up to defend human rights and raise concerns about alleged human rights violations. Uh, especially in the North Caucasus, we see that today people are just very afraid to speak up, to talk about human rights violations, which they have themselves seen or experienced or which they have been made aware of. Um, Friederike, we know that you worked with Anna Politkovska. Uh, could you tell us about your personal memories of working with her? She was definitely someone who uh, showed a lot of compassion for the people she, she spoke to, for the people she worked with, who told her um, about the human rights violations. And even in, in very difficult situations, like, for example, just after the uh, hostage uh, crisis in the theater here in Moscow 2002, where she tried to help um, the victims or hostages, um, she came out after that and spoke to um, human rights organizations. She was extremely worried, of course. She was extremely concerned about what has happened there, but still um, provided information, the necessary information, with such a professional stand found the very impressive. Thank you very much, Federica, for your interview. Это не лучшие переживания в жизни. Это тяжело, потому что ты не знаешь, что делать, когда ты вышел дома из подъезда и так далее. Но все-таки я думаю, что это благополучная история, потому что я журналист. За мной редакция, э, депутаты Госдумы, которые писали письма, чтобы изловили этого Лапина. За чеченской семьей и за чеченцами никого нет. Они один на один с военным бандитом. И э, они никак защититься не могут. 